met a few of you guys. I'm Jason. Uh, we're shooting reps from North Florida and Central Florida. Cover from Vero Beach all the way over to Port Charlotte, Florida Georgia border to Tallahassee. You got two thirds of the state. We got two other reps to cover. One covers the Panhandle. We got the guy that covers South Florida and the Cari uh, Caribbean. Uh, my background: ten years tile installation up in Jacksonville, Florida. So the beautiful thing about what I was able to achieve was with basically just the Coast Guard opportunity, minimum college education, got myself into contracting against my parents' best wishes, kind of look back at it, like, mm. they tried to warn me to stay out of it, but anyway, I got a rep to talk to me back in 2000, I was only in business for four years, but it was the most humbling experience that afternoon I spent with them, because I realized in that afternoon, I finally understood what the governing body, the Tile Council of North America, has anybody heard of that? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I didn't. I was in business for four years. I had no idea what the Tile Council of North America was. I didn't even know what a wheat pole was or a pre slope in shower pants. So just trying to paint a picture here. But I had a business card, a couple hundred dollars worth of tools, and I'm setting tile. That's all I had to do. $80 occupational license. It might be a true story, you might relate to that. But my point is, I had the rep, like myself, came in and gave me an afternoon at my builder's request, talking about showers, talking about our governing bodies, talking about their products and how it can make a difference. I, I mean, I hit, bought, and sinker. Seven years I had to run the Schluter product. Now I work for the company. I mean, it was that impactful to me. So uh, I'm going to start giving you guys a little bit of history about Schluter. Hist uh, Schluter is one of those products that I'm telling you, if you look at it, and I was one of them, in, in Jacksonville, Lofton Tile, they had a little floor model. We put this on there for a reason. This little plexiglass. Because people have a tendency to become like pigs. We think, oh, that's inferior. I was one of those guys. They had a little floor model on top of a piece of plywood. And then they were pushing this as an underlayment for top. So I used to go around there. Oh, Give me a couple pallets of cement board. <laughs> I didn't get a hold of. So it's one of those things. But the rep hit me up four, late, four years later at my bill's request and said, let me explain to you how this works. And he came up the stairwell with two rolls over his shoulder, basically 40 pounds each, 80 pounds. I can carry that too. But yeah, yeah, one bag, boom. And he started explaining to me what that equivalent was. That was 50 sheets of cement board. That was the impact moment right there. Because that house we were in, that week prior, we were in the same floor plan. It was a beach house, multiple story, all primary living space, plywood. So we had five pallets of cement board out in the driveway. And we're all humping it up a stairwell, beating the crap out of our backs and, and getting, a, getting a back order, you know, getting that uh, from uh, the builder saying, hey, you got to do some drywall repair in that stairwell. From, all that. Plus, our guys were all beat up. Anyway, I'm painting the picture for you guys. You guys probably know that story very well. Well, it's one of those things that I'm just telling you, the Schluter, you'll probably pass it by unless someone gives you the opportunity to listen and just explain to it how it works. So Mr. Schluter, as a tile contractor or tile mason back in Germany in the late 60s, he was a mud man. And what starts this whole conversation about Schluter products was the most significant thing that changed in our industry from the 60s to the 70s. You guys know what that was? We use it, 90% of all applications, of tile applications in, in the United States are used with a thin set base application. He saw that coming. But up to that point, he was doing inch and a half mortar screed. Yeah, I was gonna say, that was the yeah. Thing. yeah, there was no thin set. It was all Portland and sand and Portland paste and wet soaked tile. But to transition and protect his doorways, which were probably a lower transition, carpet, finished plywood, I mean wood flooring, whatever have you, inch and a half marble threshold or saddles, they call them. That would be installed, and that would come up and do the edge dressing to the mortar assembly, the wire, the edge of the tile, and give edge protection. Well, he wanted to give this new thin set a shot on one of his jobs in the early 70s. Had seven doorways, this is a true story. He realized it's a great product. In, uh, thin set is great. We don't need a mixed mortar. We don't need a 1,000 pounds of equipment. We can put it, a little bit of methyl cellulose, add it to our uh, sand and cement. Hey, Matisse, come in, buddy. How are you doing, buddy? Add the water, mix it up, and we all know what margin, our, our notch draws are. Notch it, set in the floor, but now you're literally about half inch off the substrate versus an inch and a half, two inches. Those marble thresholds did them no good. So you, all, you guys know about our metals and profiles, right? Yeah. Okay. Here they are, right here. Well, this is what Mr. Schluter started with. He went to a curtain rod manufacturer. Our main factory's in East Alone, Germany. This is where the whole story started. So Mr. Schluter is starting Schluter Tile in East London, Germany. He went to a curtain rod manufacturer and said, can you extrude me a 90 degree L angle with some trapezoids in it so I can put some thin set, anchor it in, and then what this 
anchor leg does, it actually locks in to the thin set and you put your tile, which covers the edge and gives edge protection right here. Because all seven of his first thin set application uh, doorways were chipped. He realized he had to come up with a solution. So that was the invention of the trim sp specific metal profile in our industry in 1970. The problem was he didn't put the patent on it. That, who, who's heard of Blanqui? Has anybody heard of Blanqui? All right, well, there's a blue manufacturer of what Fluter does. Fluter is the orange material, the orange membrane profile. Blanqui is a curtain rod manufacturer that put the patent because he started selling more of these than he did curtain rods. They're mortal enemies to today. Mr. Fluter learned a lesson. Now he patents everything. The only thing he actually changed is it was a triangle. He turned it to a trapezoid. So anyway, you see the trapezoid. That's our trademark. But anyway, so from there, he started out with metal transitions to be thin set applied at a lower level. And then he did a whole series of adjacent. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. Come on here. Come on. Pass that pizza around. And you go get, you go set up. And get this guy shipped real quick. My shooter. <laughs> My shooter. Good. And Portland paste on the back butter of the tile into the Portland sand that was fluffed up. Inch and a half, two inches with some wire in there. On a loose piece of felt, mineral wool, whatever that is. When that's not bonded, guess what happens? Do you guys realize that concrete has a coefficient of thermal expansion, which is a fancy phrase, it just means it expands and contracts twice a tile. So that's opposite movements. Tile is sensitive to that. That's called dimensional instability. Wood, which is only real popular stick frame, as we call it here in the United States, they don't do that too much in Europe, four times that of tile. Very, it's a death blow. Plus the, the, the bending and, and the deflection, that's another issue. So, Due to change in temperature, change in moisture content, our substrates are going to expand and contract. Tile is sensitive to that, but if it's not properly supported, what also happens to it? It cracks under load. Okay, so it needs to be properly supported, but it needs some type of relaxing plane from the substrate. Well, that's what the old mud men were doing. They were loose laying slip sheets, which was relaxing the expansion and contraction of the concrete from negatively affecting through that slip sheet, not bonded, and not negatively affecting the mortar bed and properly supported 100% bonded tile, which is now strong under load. Well, over in Europe, it's called the same strata method. It's the oldest method. It goes back 6,000 years, depending who you talk to. And this is the research Mr. Schluter did. He was trying to figure out what does he need to create for a thin set environment? He said it has to be an uncoupling system. So I just told you what slip sheets are. That's an uncoupling system, but the oldest is called the same strata method. It's real simple. What the ancients would do is they wouldn't bond their tile directly to their substrate. They would put in about three to four inches of sand, mason sand type of material, pack it in, just like sand in a play box or out here in, on the East Coast. I don't know if you guys can drive on the beach over here, but I'm over from Daytona. They're still driving on the beach. Cars ain't sinking unless you get a soft spot, but for the most part, it's strong under load. That's the good part. So that's what tile needs, strong under load. But when sand is in between your tile that's seated into the surface of the sand and the substrate below, sand has little cohesive strength. That's where you have that relaxed plane. That's where the sand rolls on itself. So that sand strata method is the oldest uncoupling system that we know of in the industry. And those are two basic uncoupling applications, mud, slip sheets, and sand strata that lasted from 6,000 years up until the 60s. So when we came up with thin set, what did we start doing? What did we do? We took thin set, put it right on the bare concrete, and we started seeding our tiles right to that concrete. And there's two types of concrete in the United States. There's two types of concrete in the world. Let me back and retract. Two types of concrete in the world. It's kind of a joke, but it's not a joke. It's the seriousness. That's right. Concrete that has cracked, concrete that will crack. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. The world of concrete says it will crack inside every 20 to 25 feet in each direction. Hence, that is the location for our interior surface joints. We need to put those. It'll crack outside about every 8 to 12 feet in each direction. That's where our location for exterior surface joints. It's a little soft location, a little cripple zone, if you will. So with that, you guys got that little sample over there. Mr. Schluter said, all right, I need to design a thin set applied system, but for today's building envelope. It needs to be light. It needs to come up with a clever pattern. And why not add a waterproofing element? Because we build with a lot of wood that is moisture sensitive. Well, that's what this is, gentlemen, right here. High density polyethylene. That's all that is. So if we got moisture management right now, you know it's going to work. Take the seam, I'll get into that. But also, it's the funny shape was the magic of detail. Once you, once you 
get this explanation of how this funny thing works, which is so soft and crumbly, which again was my problem in 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, until it finally got explained to me. I'm like, there is no way I'm putting that on plywood and putting my tile on it. There's no way it's gonna work. Does that work? All right, so you got an airspace. You look at it sideways. That airspace, this little rib structure, cleverly designed, never goes away. Thin set only mechanically fastens into the policing. It doesn't absorb and fill that airspace. It just grabs it. Very good. Uh, of course, the thin set, you get the right thin set. We're talking for plywood, modified thin set. The plywood, non-modified thin set to bare concrete. And I'll get into why we need non-modified. But once it grabs, as our concrete expands and contracts, this little rib structure in every direction, every three quarters of an inch, it puckers. It just simply puckers. Now we got a loose system. And what happens on the surface is the magic. Thin set does not stick to plastic. So if you were to look at it sideways, Mr. Cabinet Man, yeah. what's better, chemical or mechanical? A lock, a chemical lock or mechanical lock? Think of your fine cabinetry that goes back thousands of years when they dovetail. Well, yeah, they have the cabinetry there. We prefer, Schluter prefers, Schluter prefers mechanical. Fleecing is a mechanical grab into the hairs of this. We're gonna get into the pores of the substrate, that's mechanical. And then in the surface, it's not a, this little grid pattern is not a perfect square. This is our pattern, it's an actual dovetail. So now the thin set locks in the sidewall, it doesn't come off the floor, but it doesn't stick, and that's where the slip is. If you were to do some, I don't have a PowerPoint up here, but sometimes if you go, I'm gonna give you a DVD, you can watch it on your computer. It shows in slow motion, this little mortar pedestal that's created this slip. So now we have created in a 1 8 thin format, the ability to give strong under load, every square foot, you have 144 mortar columns at 2000 PSI. That's entry level non-modified thin set. You know mortars that go up to four and 5,000. But can you imagine 2,000 PSI? That's a lot of strength, every square inch. So 2,000 PSI, 144, strong under load, but that doesn't sacrifice the air gap that's there that puckers, and now you get that slip effect. So he was able to create, for the first time in 1987, in a thin 1 8 format, an ability to thin set, bond your membrane, put your tile on it, you're no higher than maybe 5 eighths off the floor, and you could take the seams if you need waterproofing. One more benefit, here in Florida, you guys need this. Do you guys have sweaty slabs here in Florida? <coughs> a lot of moisture coming through? Yeah. Have you guys heard about vapor pressure buildup and things blowing <coughs> off the floor because it's building up pressure, popping up? Well, what do you think that air gap does when it's on concrete? It lets the moisture come up to pressure. If I was to put one of my other products now, which I'm gonna get into the waterproofing product, it's called Kirby, you've seen it for the showers. We don't recommend this for just waterproofing floors. Detra would be your total system. You would waterproof the floor at the seams. It's basically a meter wide. You would simply overlap this, a two inch overlap over the seams, and you would continue the waterproof condition. But my point is, if you put a flat membrane down, which most of my competition, guess what? It's liquid or sheet rubberized, it's all flat. I see it all the time. They blister and they delaminate. You're breaking bond because the pressure is building up. Well, with this air gap, all you're doing is you're telling Mother Nature to drop the ceiling height, and this one, what, eight, nine foot, to an eighth of an inch off the floor. Once Mother Nature fills that air gap, which is all she wants to do, fancy term for you guys, vapor pressure equalization. Mother Nature comes up to pressure. Once she fills that void, she stops dead in its tracks. So now we have a vapor management system. There's no other membrane on the market that does those four things. Strong under load, uncoupling, not crack suppression, additional waterproofing and a vapor management system. If you need to throw in one more, we get the air gap gives you about 10 points of delta for sound control. It's not a lot, but it does come in handy. Any questions on Detra? No, then that was that was it? When you thin set it, again, two types of thin set that, that you, it's in the industry, if anybody wants to know why we use unmodified, I'll clarify it right now. You do have it, you wanna know why? No, I had a different no, you guys, good. The Ditra exterior. Yes. Yes, no, how, yes. how yes. do we do it? Well, we actually just came up, because Ditra is not a drainage plane. Right. Architects, what I used to do when I first came on seven years ago, and I didn't fully explain it to them, it's more a dry system, where if you put a very thin layer of thin set, that's the way it works. Water would get through your grout joint, mix it with a very thin layer of thin set, and it could dry back out between showers. That's not what happened on board. The guys like to use things that we like because our yes. substrates are like this. 
we put a nice wad of mortar. That's where it's not drying out too good. This retains the water, and now, have you guys heard of efflorescence? Yes. That's the one issue that Schluter's addressing right now. We have details in this deep drain installation manual. You guys don't have one, I got plenty back here. This deep drain installation manual covers all the places that deep drain can be used. The four functions I explained to you, it's a reminder right here. There's a little uh, legend. Every time you go to uh, uh, a substrate condition, wood substrate, concrete, jupcrete, heated flooring, exterior balconies, based on that environment, this legend tells you how significant these functions are. Concrete, this is very high. Vapor, second floor outside, waterproofing, key. Concrete, uncoupling. We have these different points, but anyway. So to answer your question outside, yes, we have DITRA right here under exterior application. Unoccupied space, concrete. Very simple. What are we protecting? Rebar. You guys heard of spalling, right? Untreated concrete's got rebar in it, metal. Water gets to the concrete. pH, moisture, it actually blows up, rust, and blows out. It's called spawn. So you always want to keep that dry. A lot of tile guys are when they're doing that. They think it's just concrete. Well, that's the direction that Schluter's trying to take everybody. Let's protect the tile by addressing the needs of our building envelope. That's kind of what this whole program's about. Wood, unoccupied space. We can tell you how to turn a cantilevered wood deck, but most of the decks here in Florida are occupied space. That means, yeah, we got ceiling fans, even though it's outside, TVs, furniture, finished ceiling drywall, fans, finished drywall, yeah. yeah, occupied space. So just to let you know the direction, which I'm not gonna get into right now, but we are pushing Vincent compatible roofing primary that the roofers turn that into a roof, and then we have a conversation of turning it into a tile deck system. And the product that just came out, it is a combination of our, of our drainage membrane Troba, it's a slip sheet slash drainage mat for the old mud assembly that we used to have you do. And then waterproofing with the detra on top of the mud. That's the thick sandwich, it's weighted, it's complicated. It we now have a thinner system which is not in here yet, okay. it's coming out. It's a product that's basically detra and Troba combined, it's called detra drain. Okay. Detra drain is completely different than this. I don't have it here, but if you were to flip it upside down, it's basically a fleecy stream on top and it allows the thin set layer and the grout layer for the water to get in and evacuate, which helps minimize the efflorescence problem. Okay, so yes to your question, but I would say we will get with you guys if you want to talk more about it. You guys just get my card and we'll talk about Dietra Drain. Robert, do you have Dietra Drain in stock? No, but we have sold it. You have sold it, okay. Somebody has bought it once. Okay, okay. brand new product. We're talking just this, this year? This came year. Right? This year yeah. came you out. Right? You, got it. you can get it, yeah. Okay, so just know guys that um, wherever you want to put Dietra, it's, we call it the universal underlaying. Wood, concrete, gypcrete, which is good for post-tension, pre-stressed concrete. What do they do when it's all put together? It's all wavy, they put a gyp topping on it. You need to waterproof. That's one thing I know about gyp. It doesn't react real well to the reintroduction of moisture. It dusts and breaks bond and your tiles pop off. Gypcrete has to be waterproof. That's what Dietrich can do. So just know that we do have a universal underlayment program and every roll of Dietrich you buy, one of these bad boys pops out of the roll. So we have the full written instructions. And I have more if you guys want to take that. Okay. So um, definitely just want to kind of cover the DITRA. Now, there's two things that people don't like. Homeowners, doing some research over the years. The company, the Tallah Council of North America, my company. You guys are familiar with comfort floor systems. Radiant heating, electric comfort floor systems, a little different. Well, apparently people don't like crack tile, they don't like damaged tile, and they don't like cold tile. <laughs> So that's what I'm here to promote. You guys got your little samples in front of you. Yep. That's a little t-shirt, by the way. It's for your spice tape for 20 washes to get the wrinkles out of it. <laughs> but they cramped in a little George t-shirt and a foot print. But here's what we got. When it comes out. This is what we got. Sure. This is what Dietra heat looks like, kind of a partly assembled section. I'm going to put them in right here. Your components are the Dietra heat membrane, programmable, non-programmable thermostat. These are your two options. You've got to have the thermostat and the cable of your choice. This is the cool thing about this system. What we know is most radiant heating, or I'm sorry, electric comfort floor systems comes on sheets and mats. Very hard to customize. Once you figure it out, sometimes I heard you have to get with the rep of that company, give them a layout and they'll actually customize some sheets for you to lay it out based on your location. 
uh, of where you want to warm up the floor. That's very common. They know that you're not going to warm up the whole area. So Schluter's done something a little bit different. We're able to come up with the uncoupling. We got five, four functions. This is your fifth and most new. This just came out on the top of Italy, guys. Two months old. Dietra heat. Dietra heat is going to give you all those four functions we discussed. The vapor, the water protein, the uncoupling. Think about a heating system in between your floor and your tiles, heating up and cooling down, heating up and cooling down. What do you think is going to happen? Mass expansion contraction by design. You're creating it. I have heard from the industry <laughs> that they're having problems. If you look at our Dietra installation manual, we have been coming to the rescue and we have, this is just me you quick play by play from what I hear. The heating manufacturers make their products, they recommend a layer of self level. That's kind of a standard option. Then they're recommending that you put Dietra as an uncoupling system to protect the tile in between the heating system. That's four layers. Wire system, leveling, Dietra, then your tile. How nice is it to get finally, like Schluter, to get on board and say, let's then set a Dietra membrane but put studs in it so we can run a heavy duty gauge wire and you can customize it. So these are going to come in different ways. So Schluter tells, and this is coming in our installation manual, it says bypass your toilets. Think of this gets warmed up around 90 degrees, wax ring, melting, six inches out in front. How about an exterior wall? How about an exterior wall? We got a lot of heat on that exterior wall in cool mornings. We're going to condensate eight inches. So once you start figuring out navigating around toilets, vanities, maybe bypassing other things, your 100 square foot room with actual deep trip, maybe you only need 60 some odd feet. That's what we want you to know. You want to order enough cable which you're actually going to run. But the cool thing is, once you get this material, let me show you how easy it is. I just did one recently. It took the guy about 100 square foot area of Dietra, 30 minutes to install the Dietra um, membrane. And we went in, let me run some stuff. Got some cable. I recommend, I don't have it, but get a little spool. You guys are electricians. Yeah. yeah. But what you're going to do is get your wood float. And before you take it off the spool, that's why I brought this to remind you. Yeah. In the back of our Dietra, insta uh, Dietra heat installation manual, there's actually three tests you guys need to perform. For warranty. You need to perform a conductor resistance test on the cable before you take it out of the box. You need to do an insulation resistance test on the cable before you take it out of the box. And then it's a uh, what am I studying? What I miss? Conductor ground test. You gotta do a ground test basically. You can talk to me, I'll I can explain to you how we do that. If you don't have an electrician that can help you test for it, but you need an ohm meter or a mega meter. Uh, once you get those values. The next thing you do, and they all check off, you simply start running your cable. And all you're going to do is you're going to come off the wall, say eight inches. You run it in. It's that simple, guys. Here, pop it in. This cable is specifically designed the thickness to pop into the stud plane. And the maximum performance it is recommended that you guys come around three. So that's, that is the designated distance that we want you guys, at a minimum, to run it, just like so. Is that as far as the radiant source travel? That's just the efficiency of it. That's the efficiency? That's the efficiency of it. If you put it too hot, you know what's going to happen? You're going to overheat. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to blow it out. So you I'm can go a little wider. You can go, I mean, I, we don't recommend going anything over six. But you can be from three, but three is optimum. Three is optimum. And that's, I was going to say, why eight inches off the wall? Oh, the way eight inches off the wall is, first of all, if you put it real close, especially on exterior wall, you can get condensation. Well, I'm talking three, four inches. Oh, well, check this out. No, no. If, if you're coming, your heat is going to radiate out about a good six inches. Oh, that over, much? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's another thing is you don't need to overwire. You put it way over there, you're just burning up. You're causing issues you don't need to. So let's just say the, the example three foot water closet space, we were basically had maybe about this distance right here. I ran it in, that was basically a foot and a half down the center of that water closet, six inches out from the toilet and right back out. And I was literally eight inches off. 
And the customers have already said that they can't tell the difference where that wire is. The whole floor is still warm. Thank you. You have to, you have to get the wall. You're not going to be against the wall. Time out. Yeah. <laughs> All those things are correct. You're not going to stand up against the wall, and you don't want to condensate and just waste the cable. So it does radiate out. Yeah, it's very efficient. It's probably one of the best systems on the market. And this does come in 110 and 240. Don't, really, don't tell me why or ask me, but I'll get the answer for you why we have the 240. But I heard it's a better performing system, more efficient. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just as a customer. So you're going to basically, from us, you need three things. You need to get your nitro membrane. It comes on a roll. It comes in a, in a sheet. It comes in kits right behind me. Boom. I think this is, is this the small one or the big one? The big one. That's the big one. The big one comes with 38 square foot of warming space. But I can tell you the benefit of this. What I can do with this is this whole room was nitro heat. And I want to navigate. That's the difference of this cable system. Now I can run, zigzag, and I can turn. I'm not calling manufacturer like in your name and say, hey guys, I got a drawing here. I need you to give me some sheets so I can kind of navigate around. I can navigate as I choose and work with the customer, so it's very customizable. And all you're going to do is once it's down and you like the layout, before you turn it over to the, to the electrician to wire it up, we do one more test value after you run the cable on it. On the Dietra heat, once the cable's run, I'll read it to you again. So you've got before installation, after cable is installed on the Dietra heat, and then the electrician, before he wires it, after it's been tiled, he's got to do one more test. But these tests take two minutes, they're not hard. And then just, I can give you those values, just so you know. So I don't have it memorized, but I can tell you what they are. And I'm not an electrician, so that's what's, what's the thickness of that stuff? Half inch, quarter? Yeah, it's a quarter of an inch. So if I, if I did that in the bathroom, and I didn't do it in the closet, she didn't care one way or another. You could actually change it to the other detail. Okay, okay, okay. Absolutely. So Save you some cost. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, I believe this guy that did this, my installation, he did the outside bedroom floor. It's that uh, ceramic or porcelain plank wood flooring stuff. Yeah. He had the Dietra XL out in that outside floor, stopped it at the doorway, and it was all Dietra heat just in the kitchen. So he ordered, like I said, it's about 100 uh, square foot of Dietra heat ordered the programmable, which is $20 in difference in cost. The programmable is 250 programs. Don't ask me why you need 250 programs. But the non-programmable is simply off on and one smart setting, meaning maybe you want it to come on at 5 a.m. for 12 hour cycle. It'll turn off at 5 p.m. That's your simple setting. But you can either go and click it on. I think it takes about 30 minutes to come up. And your I think your comfort system will run you right around Right now, you're talking much colder than that on your top floor. So, uh, 30 it, minutes you said to heat them up? Yeah, 30 minutes to warm up. Yeah. Any questions so yeah. far? Yeah. Nope, the Dietrich. Okay. Cost plus the cost. Oh, damn it, he was there. Okay. I did an exercise this morning with the guy. It was 120 <laughs> square feet. We went through the programmable. By the way, the programmable and unprogrammable in our catalogs right now, 2014. <laughs> 50 and 230, $20 difference. I got an email yesterday. I don't know, and I'll get with these guys and let them know, but I think in the next week or two, we're selling so many of these out of the gate within two months, the price has been dropped by $60. 190 for the, the programmable, and I think it's 170 for the non-programmable. So thermostats have gone down. But once you factor in your, your price on your thermostat, your cable and your Dietra, the guy that he came up with, retail price, $10 a foot. If you guys know, from experience, I hear that's pretty comparable, if not competitive. And that's not your cost. That is the retail cost. And maybe something you want to charge to Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Roughly 10 bucks a foot. Pretty good? How about yeah. the glass? That's good. Uh, warranties are 10 years. 10 years. All of the Schluter warranties, by the way, Dietro, profiles, everything we're discussing, they're 10 year systems warranties. In the back of every one of our installation manuals, the shower well, I'm about to talk to, we have a shower manual. You have the Dietra manual, we just discussed that briefly. I just showed you the Dietra heat manual. It tells you the warranty and what that's involved. It says limited, but let me tell you it's not limited. If we have a manufactured defect and you did everything for our instructions, which is non-modified set, thin set for plywood, unmodified, which I didn't really get to, and I'll talk about that maybe even showers, for the surface of the tile, and the right notch trial, and you check for coverage, that's the most important thing. 
you really need to just flip this back. Look for 50-50 transfer and like attacking it. You don't want to see a lot of white. That's not a good sign. That means you don't have enough thin set or your thin set's too dry. This fleecing likes a little more fluid. We get into that in our um, innovation workshop where they're classroom and hands-on. We're actually working with you guys. We're building small shower compartments. But anyway, you do that simple thing, it's covering the installation and the tile itself. They don't care. 50 cents a foot, $500 a foot. We basically, we take ownership of that assembly for 10 years. So if we go in, we have cracked tile, we have issues, we come in and we see, man, you got good coverage, it's ripping apart like it's supposed to. We got no problems with your application. Schluter's on the hook. I mean, you give us the price to tear it out, you give us the cost of the material or an equipment that might not even be available at that time, we pay for you to put it back in. Pretty nice warranty. When I came on with the Schluter products, it was only five, but nobody at that time was giving me that type of warranty. I felt naked and afraid out there as a top contractor, and I couldn't afford to be sued. So I was honored and felt blessed to have a company like Schluter backing me up with good warranties. And I was passed on to my, my homeowners back in 2000. Mold and waterproof and warranties for five years. As I, I'm gonna segue in the shower. What's your current warranty for your customers? I'm just gonna ask the group. Average warranty for customers right now doing a shower. You, what do you guys give them? Any, do I have any lifetime warranties out there? Old enough, but yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you saying? I'm sorry, I missed the part. Uh, uh, were you saying V-notch to put that down? No, um, quarter inch. A quarter, quarter inch notch. And then pat it in. Just pat, pat it in, that's it. Yeah. Fluid nature, yeah. you actually use this exact same float yeah. to smash it in. It's that easy. So it's notch trial, you push it in like this, fill it back to check for coverage, push it back in, that's a warranty, that's simple. No self-leveling required for the assembly. Once you put it in, you run your wire, you do your testing, you can start setting tile immediately. It's a pretty nice system. Red chopstick for that? Ah, uh, you would go there, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's, it's a bear, it won't catch it. It barely goes on to detour, but it can be done. So let me tell you the trick, as an ex tile guy. You have to kind of, um, straight edge. No, straight edge and pencil, it will work, that, that gets redundant and you hate doing that. But you can pop up a decent line, it's barely there, you run by and you put clear hairspray or clear lacquer, you tack up the Ditra, you pop a new line in it and it sticks to that lacquer. That's without having to do what some of our seasoned installers like to do. They like to put the Ditra in, use their thin set, skim it in and get like a nice hard crusty surface, usually white, and it hardens up. And the benefit of that is now there's no other bilateral trades dropping their crumbs and their dirt and their sawdust in your dovetail, which can avoid a warranty because if you get dust and they're not thin set, you don't have a mechanical connection. So anyway, that's just a little side benefit. But it's, it's a good question. I don't get hit a lot with that. But popping chalk lines is a little tricky. It can be done, but it, it's not the easiest thing. So. It's never been a deal breaker. We're still selling. The membrane was developed in 87 in Germany. So I got to the US market in 87, and it's been our flagship product until the shower system. Because everybody's got one, right? Everybody's got showers, everybody uses them. Um, this is a fun exercise to tell you about a little bit of historical perspective on showers. This guy's like, man, I don't know, man. <coughs> I just don't know if I could afford that for my customer. Okay. How's this? If I ever told you, has anybody ever told you that waterproofing is not a gray zone? And I mean this because, remember I was telling you my story when the Schluter rep came out and I had five years or four years in the business, and I'm like, wow, that was a humbling experience. I realized those four years that I boogered up a lot of people's homes. Once I realized and explained what the difference between waterproof and maybe what I was doing wasn't quite waterproof, that's exactly what Schluter's trying to do, is trying to give you a 100% waterproof environment. Because in a shower, if you were to equate it to inches of rainfall, this is a fun little fact for you guys, how much rain do we get on our roofs here in the state of Florida? Actual precipitation on our roofs, 55 inches. Seattle gets about 35. How you doing? How you doing, man? Uh, Phoenix gets seven and a half, but we and our building industry take our roofs dead serious. All the inspectors come through. How, you know, our exterior waterproofing package is taken very dead serious. Well, if I was to tell you that you get three cubic inches of rainfall at a two and a half gallon uh, a minute flow rate out of a shower head, average user 10, 15 minutes, that's three cubic inches in a three by five or a four by four shower. Three cubic inches a day. Does everybody take a shower every day? Uh, 
much though, right? Yeah. You all smell pretty good. Yeah. You take you. You're very fresh. <coughs> I see. This nice little fragrant odor came in here. I gotta have the cleanest boy in Florida. I gotta yeah. have two. Overachiever. Overachiever. Okay. Overachiever. <laughs> I like that overachiever. I love it. <laughs> There's always one. Okay. One shower, one user. Three cubic inches times 365. Quick math. What is it? 1,100 inches. That's how much rainfall, if you were to equate it coming out of your shower head. And this is my point. What are we doing? And I'm, I'm guilty, so let me tell you what I used to do. I'm just going to tell you what I did. And you guys can nod and say, yeah, that sounds about right. Cement board. Screwed it screwed right to bare wood studs. Over a baggy liner that sometimes I would cut that liner, renegotiate, yeah. or <laughs> put it up a little high. Maybe if I really wanted to do it right, I'd get some wire lath, get a little mud collar, because I didn't want my board to toe in. And then. That rubber liner would be sitting up about six inches higher than my curb. I said, I gotta slice that bad boy and peel it right over and nail my curb off, and then I gotta screw in my cement board and nail into that, that liner. Because, I mean, this is just standard practice. I know I wasn't the only one. Maybe some of y'all still know about people doing that. Well, that what I just described to you, that is not waterproof. That's not a warranty application. If you were to look at the Tyler Campbell handbook, that basically tells you everything I just did was 100% wrong. <laughs> so, that's just kind of my story. Mr. These guys came around the rep and he showed me one of these rings. It's called an integrated bonding plane. Maybe I'll pull one of these out. Can I pull that out for you? This is where the industry changed. Mr. Schluter had this Curdy fabric, which is what is it, right here. This was developed to waterproof pools in Germany, above ground. It's a meter wide, like the Dietra, two inch overlap. It's basically this soft pliable polyethylene with fleecing heat laminated just with mechanical connection because we apply all of our products with thin sets. Thin set to the substrate, thin set to the surface, two inch overlap, and you've got a waterproof thing. The only problem is this member this membrane wasn't designed to connect to a clamp and ring style drain. We <coughs> wanted to connect to the surface. This one right here. He said he actually this is what it looked like, the prototype that he developed back in the late nineties. He went to Odie, Zern, Sam Joseph, Sam Watt, all these major drain manufacturers he said, would you make this? We don't want to get in the pump business. We're a bunch of tall guys. We've got a membrane that we need to drain that we can connect to. They laughed at me. Mr. Studer put the patch on it. And they call it a curdy drain. But a non-proprietary term that's called integrated bonding plan. Integrate, into your slope, has the ability for it to, in the slope plane, bond a membrane to. And when you do that tile directly on top of it, where does the water go once you make the water plane connection? Woo! You have now just created what he calls a dry shower, or what he dubbed the term moisture management. You're managing to get that moisture 100% of the time, no guesswork, no question. It's going right here, folks. That's what blew my mind in 2000 when the drain just came out. I'm like, I was red garden mud bed, and I was just goofing up around a strainer lid, but with no watertight connection. That's what I'm saying. I was doing what I thought I had to do, but didn't really have an understanding. So. This is, within this is what I'm telling you. You're either waterproof or you're not. Mr. Schluter is a solution that before you put an ounce of thin set tile and grout on it, it is a fully functional shower, which is a proud statement I think we can all say is, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, when I get in your house, I'm gonna build you a waterproof shower. You could use that bad boy before I show up to tile it. Because tile is exactly that. On the floor, on a countertop, in a wall. It's a cosmetic veneer. We don't always, it's a term that I didn't use, it's a term I didn't understand. I thought thin set was my magic elixir. I'm gonna thin set right to that concrete and blow and go. I'm gonna thin set right to my bare concrete board, blow and go. Anyway, that's a true story. I had five, what's it, four, four and a half, almost five years as a contractor, a humbling experience, but this is what changed my life and my career is I started solving solutions for my customers and giving them at the time five year mold and waterproof and warranty. The one thing that nobody tells you about mold, systemic mold, which could be completely avoided is if you keep moisture from mixing in with your organic food sources, the paper, the wood, everything that we construct with, the air source that we're living and enjoying right now, 75 degrees, that's a perfect air, sep uh, air temperature setting. That's a constant. That air, this wood, those are constants you can never change. The only thing that you guys can change and redirect is the moisture. And that's what Mr. Schluter was able to turn this industry around. And guess where we're going, guys? This is the direction. If you were to go out and shop, you're gonna find my competition now making these drains, which we were heretics, what, back even just five years ago. Yeah, five years Everybody ago. was laughing at us, going, man, get that crap out of here, that stuff don't work. They were just didn't understand it, but I'm just telling you. So we're giving you a fully functional
functioning shower component systems that at a minimum, it's a drain, it's a membrane, and if you were curious about the board, this is our latest addition, guys, right here. What's that cube? You have a little cube back there? Between the Dietrich heat and the Curdy board, this is what's changed our industry. We are saving a step from you guys having to apply what's in our shower installation manual. We say you can put this on drywall. You just need a backbone to hold this skin up because you're actually turning an, a, a, a non-waterproof <coughs> material into a waterproof product with a layer of plastic on it, and it's not going to get wet, <coughs> so why overkill it? But I have a lot of contractors and builders that say, not on my, not on my watch. But they're still putting cement board on it. Fine, it's overkill. It's never going to get wet because if it did, you didn't do something right. It's not supposed to get wet. Nothing is supposed to get wet in the shower. Well, so when you omit the water, you've just prevented mold and mildew, and that's part of our warranty. You will never have systemic mold, which is that stuff that's eating away with the water into your organic food sources, and when the homeowner hits it with the bleach, kills it for a week, but comes right back, that says you've got a water problem. That doesn't happen anymore. No more discolored grout, no more damaged and rotten wood stud, but to make it easier on you guys, the Curdy fabric, over drywall, cement board, dance shield, whatever you guys have, or the half inch, four foot by eight foot or four foot by 64 inch panels, you can go right to the stud plan. So you're saving a step. You can cut out the equation. That's what Pulte figured out. Pulte says, we are killing ourselves paying a drywaller to hang drywall and uh, Pulte, South Florida, Tampa area right now, Pulte's doing it, because they realize that 4,000 shower units were spending too much money paying one trade to hang a board and another trade to wallpaper a shower, the tile trade. The tile trade couldn't keep up with the drywall. As you know that, right? The drywall is blowing and going. They said, let's get, the, let's get the majority of that waterproofing out of the equation and have the drywall, who's already hanging drywall, just take out drywall and plug in pretty board, four by eight sheets. And then the tile guy, before he tiles it, he just puts the band over the seams of the penetration, which is required by our industry. All boards need to be taped and seamed. We're just using 10 cent waterproof products, 10 year warranty. So pull these fit figures on. So it's just an easier, fast way. And that's if you guys haven't picked up on what Schluter's MO is, solving solutions, but we're trying to make it easier on the installer so you don't have to work your butt off to get to the end result, which is a high performance system, keeping some of the best warranties in the market for your customers. And that's where we're at right now. You guys got any questions? No? All right. Pretty good sales pitch? Yeah. Okay. Now, one last thing, you don't have questions. Um, one of the benefits that I saw of board when the drywall guy is not doing it yeah. is get to control your substrate by using thin set mortar on the stud. That's right. Is that that's true. Okay. So his question is that's right. And I'm sorry I'm going through there's so much I'm thinking I was just gonna tell you about our two day workshop because I know we have a short time here. But he's right. The board is a stiff building panel. It's a shim in essence. We design it that way so the tile guy can take his uh, water or his tile compartments back. If you're doing a wet area your vertical is important. We're not mud anymore. Our studs are what you do. So yes, you can actually put either shim or mortar on your studs, and you can actually re-level your board and screw it up and let it dry off. So you can re-level the board as you go. That's exactly right. And that's actually a tile council for any board, that's cement board included. That is a standard. Nobody talks about it, but shims are required for putting up backer boards in the tile industry. We need to correct our planes, but it's the tile guys, or not the tile guys, our drywallers who are just hanging drywall who are wrapping these boards around studs. And we gotta come back in and start floating them out with extra thin set, which is a whole other game. But the showers, we got them in a box. You can buy them all a cart. You can buy pre-formed trays up to six foot by six foot, four foot by four foot, three foot by uh, five foot with a center drain. And this one right behind you guys is a three foot by uh, five foot with an offset. I call that tub to shower kit conversion system, a plug and play. If you have an elderly couple that says, I'm tired of tripping over that tub lip and I want to turn to shower, that's your bad boy. If you have a residential, or I'm sorry, a commercial project, like a hotel, he says no one's using showers anymore <coughs> or tubs, which is true. I guess it's actually coming from our hospitality industry. They're over tubs. No one uses them anymore. They turn them into showers. So now it's plug and play. You don't have to really necessarily center the drain location. Um, I don't have it right here, but we do make a nice new linear drain. They come from 20 inches, two inch standard width, all the way with four inch increments up to 72 inches. That's designed that you can put along a back wall, and now you can put a single plane, 
instead of a four no. pitch shower, like this one right here, it's coming at four different angles with a little tiny drain. Okay. Got one. one, yeah. The benefit of that is now you can use large format tile and it's designed that you can omit a curb and make it what they call barrier free, wheelchair accessible, ADA compliant. So we've got those and we even got these preformed ramps. If you don't have the opportunity to have a recessed concrete floor and mud the floor up to the outside floor and flush up and slope down, we actually have ramps that you can build up on grade. A little ramp up, 2% slope, one of our slope tray systems back down to the drain, all foam. Pre-foam curbs, pre-foam niches, pre-foam seats, ramps. So you got the whole package, it's all foam. So now it's one of these plug and play systems where you got these foam components that you're going up an elevator or going up a second floor, taking a few measurements and you're ten set in these showers. Um, I can tell you a three by five shower or a four by four shower roughly installed out of the box, two hours ready for tile or a flood test within 24 hours. Okay. I don't know the last time you guys have actually timed yourselves building a shower, but we're taught, yeah, pre-slope. You guys doing the pre-slope here in Tampa, which is underneath the PVC liner. That's, if it's mud, that's a whole other, another charge. I heard you guys aren't getting paid enough to come out before the plumber to mud a shower floor so we can put the rubber liner on it, and then you come back and put another mortar on top, and then, of course, you're figuring out your waterproofing. But all those said components, maybe two different trays, what's the warranty you're giving your customer? By law, I know this, I did it for four years, one year limited labor by law. But you cannot give a system's warranty when you got four or five different components with two trades involved. It's like if something goes haywire, what do we do? <laughs> call him, no, you call him. So it's kind of what Shalina's trying to do is we're trying to drive this bus to put more power in your wheelhouse as a flooring contractor and give you your give you the warranty. And that's just the, the Schluter story. From metal profile to the uncoupling membrane to the Dietra heat to the board to the shower systems. Anywhere you could put tile, that's inside, outside, ver vertical and horizontal. We've got all the products for you guys. Um, where is those? There they are right here. I got cards over here. Uh, I just want you guys to see these. When people come through our list, we get we keep you on a file, and we give your name out. So I hope you guys are okay with that. Do you need a little bit of work? Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I think that's it, guys. I don't know if you guys have any questions, but here's this drain. That, where's the actual uh, grate? Do we have the grate? Yeah. This is what he was talking about. What I was talking about from what he wanted to show you guys. This is just a sample of it. Stainless steel hub, it's got the channel pre sloped in it. It's got these no hub connectors that we provide, the fern code, if you will, to connect to your pipe. It's got the trough. This is actually your cradle as a spacing device that if you or your plumber you want to know how high to set it, you actually set this on the concrete. It's a spacing device. That will sit right here like that. And this is designed to tie into a mortar bed or one of our pre-slope uh, tray systems. And what he's got here is a tileable grate. The cool thing about this one is this will actually fit down in there, but once you tile up on top of this and put the tile right here, it's what I call a zero visibility drainage system. All you're going to have is an open 3 16 gap, ungrouted, and that's where the water is going to fall into. You're going to tile on top of this. So if you don't like the thought of metal or anything in your shower, put tile on it and it's an invisible kind of drain like magic. Where's the water go? This is it. You're gonna actually have to tile on it. But just give me that give me that box. Let me show them what it looks like on the, the cover. Here you go guys. Here you go. This is what I'm talking about. This is what it looks like. This is what this is the tile of water. So when you tile on it, yeah. And then the other two options, it's a perforated stainless or a solid cap. But those are your three great options for the linear drain. Um, you got shirts, you got that. I got cards over here. I got the registration form. You guys have any questions for me? No? I'm good. You're good. Yeah, I got the books back here. Yeah, whatever you want. I got catalogs. I got the DVDs. Um, just come around the back.